Okay, before you freak out and go, where the hell did her hair go? And if you didn't see last week's episode, I did something called The World's Greatest Shave, which uh, raises money for people with blood cancer or leukemia. Me and my friend Oprah, I'll leave her channel linked down below. We went and shaved our heads. She'll have a video up sometime really soon with the whole process of it and how we went. So you can go and enjoy that very soon. But me not having hair isn't why you're here. Today's video, I want to talk about mistakes that beginner filmmakers make or at least people new to the film industry. I did enlist the help of some friends to try and brainstorm a few ideas about this one. Uh, so I kind of like rounded out a list of five, but there is a lot more mistakes that can be made. First up, a really big one, really annoying thing to see is film students or people who are just fresh out of film school saying that they are a head of department in conjunction with that also saying that they do multiple roles. The amount of times I've seen business cards saying XYZ that is a director, an editor, a writer, a runner, a PA, a DP. You can be a jack of all trades but you will be a master of none and that is no truer statement than in the film industry. Try to specialise and don't immediately go for a head of department role. It's probably more recommended to go for something that's a little bit lower in the ranks. Get an entry level job, like if you're wanting to be a DP, maybe starting off as a vid split or a, a camera assistant and then working your way through a little bit. Now, you don't need to do this for a terribly long time. I didn't do it for terribly long either. I did it for five years and then I decided to make the jump from there. Everybody finds a point where they can jump from and you'll find yours. But I do recommend doing assisting jobs or at least trying out assisting to just see if it's something for you. Sometimes jumping out of film school and becoming a head of department actually works, but that is such a rare case. And it usually happens with those people that just seem to ooze talent. You know, those people that you get really jealous of? those ones. But I've seen so many people get disheartened because they try and be a head of department as soon as they get out of film school and they don't have that knowledge to back themselves up and therefore they don't get hired for jobs or they completely get disregarded in the industry. It's because they're pushing themselves too far too soon. So yeah, what I suggest you do instead is you start off in an entry level position. You start off lower in the ranks and in doing that, you get the chance to sit back and see how other professionals do their jobs. As I was camera assisting, I was also shooting, but I was shooting smaller jobs, things that were no money, I wasn't being paid, friends, gigs, whatever. I had the chance to put into action things that I've learned on professional film sets. This kind of allowed me to problem solve as well, which is a really, really handy skill and very valuable on set. Knowing how to problem solve quickly is something that is highly sought after. So don't get me wrong, if you want to be a head of department and you want to try your hand at actually just being a head of department, you can go do that. And kudos to you. The second thing I want to talk about is undercharging and being taken advantage of as a result of that. I know I just said unpaid work is fine and I do unpaid work sometimes. It really does depend on the project. But I do ask myself some questions before I take on unpaid work or low paid work. Is it paid? If it is, you know, you can maybe make a little bit of money off it and maybe there will be other benefits further down the track but if it's not paid can you afford it what is the workload and what are they asking for if they're asking for a lot and they're not paying you very much that's probably not a good sign another question i ask myself is am i likely to get paid work in the future if it's a free job and i make a good contact and i get paid work in the future cool but if it's not paid or i'm going to be overworked and that contact maybe won't give me future paid work then I probably won't take it. I know I've said this in another video about overloading yourself with work and that's important here as well. Don't take on too many unpaid or low paid gigs. You're just gonna burn yourself out. Now it is generally acceptable for new filmmakers or film students to start to take on unpaid work. That's totally fine. You can do it, I've done it, everybody's really done it. I've seen so many advertisements where big name brands who are going to be making money off whatever they're doing, whatever this project is, or are paying other crew members, but not the one that they're advertising for that's being taken advantage of. You're being taken for a ride. You are doing free work for somebody who is probably just gonna move on to the next person straight after using you. Don't fall for the trap. Also be aware of unpaid internships. A lot of those are rather dodgy. Just really read into it and make sure you know everything about the company that you will be applying for. Another thing I wanna tack on here is know exactly what the full rate for that job is. And that way you can weigh up whether it's worth it or not, as well as 
try and see if you can negotiate upwards to that rate. The more people undercut in this industry, even if you are a student or a newbie to film, the more problems we're gonna have later down the track, which we can see happening now where producers or people who are hiring a film professional think that they can charge a very minimal rate for something that is worth a lot more. Don't mess it up for the rest of us. A really super important one on set is stay in your lane. If you have one job, know exactly the ins and outs of that job and all of your responsibilities. Don't step on another person's toes. Stay within your job. On smaller film sets, you might see that with permission, you know, you can move a light if that's not your job. If you're not the gaffer, you can move that light, you can move that box. Because it's such a small job and there's such a small crew, it doesn't matter. But on professional shoots, and what I would still recommend doing on those smaller jobs just to maintain that balance is not doing that. If it's not your department, don't touch it. Don't touch the lights if you're not the gaffer. Don't move this, don't move that because it's not your department. And if you move it and it goes missing, there can be trouble. It's a massive no-no on any professional film set, so just don't do it. In saying that, also remember that film is a collaborative team effort. You're all in this together. You're all trying to make one beautiful film. Everyone does their part to make sure that the well-oiled machine moves forward. This is why knowing exactly what your role is and what it entails and how it relates to everybody else's role is very, very important. It also stops you from speaking out of turn. If you see a department trying to work out something, let's just say it's a director and a DP, which I have seen on a few circumstances where a director and a DP are discussing uh, the next shot or problem solving something and then somebody completely out of that department, somebody completely unrelated comes up and gives them suggestions. Don't do that, don't be that person. It doesn't look good on you, it just confuses things, you are talking out of line, just stay in your lane. Now a part of this is also understanding hierarchy, so if you don't know where you sit in the hierarchy, that can be a little bit of an issue. But hierarchy doesn't mean not showing respect to everybody. Show respect to everybody on set anyway, that's just part of being a nice human being. And all in all, that makes for a better set and a better working environment for everybody. Word can very easily spread about bad behaviours and bad attitudes, so really be nice. Can't believe that's even a point, but you know. Okay, so waiting to be told to do something instead of just doing it or even thinking ahead. There is always something to do on set. Don't wait around, don't stand around doing nothing. There's always something to do. Doesn't matter what your role is. A part of that is actively listening. Not just constantly talking about what's coming up, but actively listening to what is going on around you. More often than not, most of my cues when I was a camera assistant were coming from the first AC or the DP mentioning something that needed to be done in the future. So they would say, oh, we're thinking about moving to here. We're thinking about setting up on this lens. So you will kind of get prepared to swing that way if you need to. Sometimes they go a completely different direction after they've just said that, but hey, that's a part of it anyway. You're just meant to be kept on your toes and constantly trying to work out what's coming up next and prepare for that as quick as you can. Most importantly, if you take the initiative and actually do those things, your initiative will be noticed and the people you are working with will be more likely to hire you again because you're on the ball. Now the fifth and final thing I wanna talk about is not asking for clarification. That is a massive mistake that beginner filmmakers make. If they're in a situation where they don't know how to do something, often they might just go, oh yeah, I'll just wing it and it'll be fine. You could be putting yourself or others in a really dangerous predicament if you do. So if you don't know how to do something, if you don't know how to set up this, if you don't know where something is or what something looks like, just ask. You're not gonna look like an idiot for doing so. Whoever is your superior is not gonna care. They're just going to show you and then you'll quickly learn that and move on. More importantly, you won't embarrass yourself later when you've done something incorrectly. That was a rather quick one to end on, but there we go. Those are my top five mistakes that beginner filmmakers make. I hope you learned something today. If you're a beginner filmmaker, don't freak out. These are only just a few of them, so there's a lot more. And guaranteed you'll come across a lot more when you're working your way through the ranks or working your way into the industry. And when you do, you'll have a lesson learned and you'll move on. Trust me, it's a lovely industry to be in, despite how hard it can be sometimes. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe, remember, remember, <laughs> remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.
And if you want to see what I look like bald, there you go. See, I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt and I'm not cold, but my head is cold. You don't realize how much heat you lose out of your head until you get rid of all your hair. Anyway, see you later.